Hi Stampers, I'm Meg from Lumen Stamps and it is a Wednesday Maker Morning with Meg video. So I am going to show you a bunch of things this morning uh, that I'm really excited about, but you know if you watch that I'm excited about everything. Um, first of all, we're gonna talk about purples. Uh, second of all, we're going to talk about uh, puffins. Uh, third, we're going to do some tie-dye. And fourth, we are going to kind of bling everything up with a fun fold and extra embellishments and so forth. So, hey Trish, good morning everybody. Hey Tanya. Um, so let's see, purples first. You guys ready? Um, so when the new in colors came out, I know um, you probably saw yesterday or the day before, I've been talking about these for a while. Um, the uh, in colors are here and they include, da -da -da, I guess that's kind of hard to see. Here you go. Um, the new in colors are out because the catalog started yesterday. And this purple right here um, is the one that I have used the most. So I know um, I had a, a vote on like a um, customer group and they voted polished pink, the top one. Um, but I'm sticking with fresh freesia. So um, one question is um, that I've had is where does fresh freesia fit into the spectrum of purples that Stampin' Up! has. So um, I didn't get Blackberry Bliss out. You guys maybe know that one is, let's see. I have a Blackberry Bliss card right here, so I'll grab this. Um, okay, so here is Blackberry Bliss. Um, and then we have Gorgeous Grape, which is a very much a purpley, um, bluey purple. This one's kind of a magenta, um, almost a sort of burgundy wine color. So we have Gorgeous Grape. And then Highland Heather, uh, which is a subtle, and Highland Heather is quite a bit um, lighter than either of those. So we have these. Um, hey, Lois and Linda and Sue. Um, so then where does Fresh Freesia fit into that? Um, as the new in color, it fits way here on the end. Check out how much lighter that is. I know I was um, really surprised at how much lighter Fresh Freesia was than the others. Um, and having that sort of like pieces all put together next to each other really gives you a wide spectrum of purple. So um, if you are a purple fan, um, know that Fresh Freesia is well beyond um, the other end of the spectrum. But I really do like um, sort of this color combination together. So Gorgeous Grape, um, uh, Highland Heather, and Fresh Freesia. So oh, I love that you guys get to say hi to each other in the morning too. <laughs> hey, Lois and Teresa. and um, Good deal. All right, so there's our little purple lesson for the day. Are you guys ready to grab um, some supplies here to add some puffins? Um, we're going to actually start, I think, with our Stamparatus because I have a big space open right now. So we're gonna go Stamparatus, Fun Fold, um, Puffins, and then some embellishment-y things from there. So, all right. So let me get you guys switched down here. So much fun stuff on my table. <laughs> all right, there, ooh, a little further. There we go. All right, do I have everybody? This is how I totally work um, when I'm working on stamping projects. I just smush everything out of the way uh, so that I have room for everything that I'm gonna work on. All right, so I have here um, my Stamparatus and the um, Spiral Die, uh, which is D-Y-E, um, the Spiral Die um, stamp, which is one large stamp. And I really, you can use it on a big block, but I really like it on the Stamparatus, um, just so that I get a really nice, consistent kind of image. And I think you guys are kind of crooked. Hopefully I won't, there we go. Um, so we're gonna go ahead with this, and I'm going to um, start here. I put my die or my stamp on here already, and I went ahead and stamped um, here onto a piece of scrap paper. Um, you can cut up the grid paper, fits nicely um, on here as like a seven and a half by seven and a half inch square. And then um, I added my magnets on top of that. So now I have a base and I know exactly where my stamp is gonna hit. So as I take my fresh freesia here, I'm going to um, go ahead and ink my stamp kind of um, you know upside down, just use your pad like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my cardstock right here in the middle of my image. Um, and this is gonna make it easier when we do our second step because 
Um, single colored tie dye is pretty, but multicolor tie dye is uh, so much more exciting. So, all right, so I'm gonna bring that over and add this across. You just squish on my um, back of my stamp so I get a nice image. And then um, there is my spiral tie dye. So really pretty, right? All right, now I need to clean this, and uh, you can take it off and clean it on your chamois or your your um, scrub or whatever. But honestly, the easiest thing to do is just grab your chamois out of its little case and go ahead and press on there, and that gives us a clean stamp right away. Super simple. All right, now um, to go with this, I will tell you that I googled. Even though I love tie dye, um, I uh, googled the like tie-dye looks for 2021. And my um, teenage daughter, of course, would be like horrified. Oh my gosh, my mom's Googling like style looks. But everything was denim and tie-dye. So I thought, what color should we put with this? I would um, go ahead and add denim to our um, card. So I went with Misty Moonlight. And let's see, oh, Sue asked about Fresh Freesia and Blackberry Bliss, yes. Um, they are here actually. Ooh, ooh, that's a pretty combination. So here's kind of Gorgeous Grape and Highland Heather. Here is um, the far ends of the spectrum with Blackberry Bliss and Fresh Freesia. Ooh, good eye. Actually, there might be a card coming soon. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, denim. I'm adding Misty Moonlight, which is a great denim color. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up again. And I want to get it completely inked. Now, Misty Moonlight is pretty strong. It's a pretty dark color um, at full strength on a fresh ink pad. So, um, and I got ink on my finger. I'm just going to wipe that off there. Now it won't transfer. Love that, having that handy. Um, so before I, um, before I put that onto my image, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp on my scrap paper one time so that I'm taking some of the ink off of my stamp. And then I'm gonna put my spiral back on. Now, in the catalog, it says um, that the suggestion is to go ahead and turn your stamp 180 degrees when you restamp. But it's so much easier to turn your cardstock 180 degrees. And if you center it in this image um, that you've pre-stamped, then you'll know um, that your spirals are gonna line up. So watch this. We're gonna run this across again, kind of get that good. Sometimes I use my elbow. <laughs> um, and then take our paper off here and we have a really fun multicolored tie-dye. Isn't that fun? So um, here I have one that was full strength um, with a misty moonlight and you can see um, it's just a little bit darker here than the um, stamped off one. And then you could go ahead and clean your um, stamp there with your um, uh, scrub again, your chamois. Okay, so we have our card here. Um, I have now um, our card base. So this is gonna be our card layer, but I promised you a fancy fold um, or a fun fold, and this one's really simple. Um, so all I'm gonna do is trim the front of our card um, base, and you can do this at any point. It doesn't really matter how much you trim off. Um, I think I'm gonna trim off an mm, inch and a quarter. And remember um, that the Stampin' Up! Um, ruler measures on both sides of the cut line, so that makes it really nice. Uh, I guess it's not a ruler. Stampin' Up! Well, uh, there are rulers. <laughs> the Stampin' Up! Um, trimmer measures on both sides. So there we have cut off the front of our card, and then this is gonna go across here. But what if I want the tie-dye to show inside our card? So then instead of leaving it like this, I am going to go ahead and cut um, off the front. And let me see. So now I'm measuring um, from the fold to this line is three inches. So I actually want this part of our um, card, this layer here, to be two and three quarter inches. So I'm going to cut two and three quarter, and there's really no up or down, so it doesn't really matter which one I do. All right, but I wanna keep my pieces oriented the same direction at least. So now this is two and three quarter, which is gonna fit on the front of our card, and then this is whatever's left over, and it's gonna fit inside our card. So see how I split that big panel to add to the center? 
um, a really easy way to kind of add some fun interest, especially when you have such a fabulous um, big background. So you could do this with designer series paper. Um, you could do this with other background stamps. Um, there are, oh, whoops, oops, oops. Uh, okay. Oh, did you see how I, I okay, <laughs> like learning moment. Um, I got it kind of crooked and I was like, ah. So what I didn't do is go and try to peel up the um, layer like this. And the sound effect is important there. It's like breaks, don't do that. <laughs> um, what I did instead was I pulled the paper sideways. So I pulled it like this. And what that does is instead of breaking all the cardstock fibers when you peel the paper back, it shears the adhesive so as you go across. And then I'm gonna take my extra layer and layer this inside. Okay, and then um, I have a piece of Whisper White, which I forgot to cut ahead of time. So let's see, I guess I know how much that is to cut off. I can use my good paper. One and a quarter. So I can just trim off from the inside here. I'm gonna just trim off one and we'll let it overlap a little bit. All right, that is going to fit here on our card. I guess I need to trim a little bit more so we don't have that little extra. Um, I love that our paper trimmer will trim these teeny weeny little um, elements very cleanly. So if you're in, in need for a new paper trimmer, definitely look at the Stampin' Up! one. Okay, so there we have our card inside. All right, so um, now we are going to, <laughs> Sue says she likes the elbow technique. Yes, it's very important. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add our puffins. So let's bring in some with, or basic white here. And I love my Memento Black for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp one puffin. And we'll do this other puffin too. I'm gonna stamp him or her. Um, and actually, here's the puffin set. So here are all of our fun puffin choices. Um, we have the party hat puffin, the dancing puffin, the sort of, um, you know, hug puffin. Lots of good choices. And then we also have these fun images to go with it. And I think I've showed you a sneak peek of this before. At the end, I'll show you another card, um, another puffin tie-dye card, so that you can kind of get another idea for that. And I'm going to bring in our... Oops, Stampin' Blend here um, to match our project. And I love the way these go together. So we have um, the Misty Moonlight, we have the Fresh Freesia, and we have Pale Papaya, which is kind of my um, go-to for putting these little guys um, together. So I'm gonna use the dark here and color his little beak. And I'm gonna color that stripe too, and I'll tell you why in a second. I'm not gonna leave it Pale Papaya because I want some differentiation there. Um, on a real puffin, I'm not sure what color it's supposed to be, but <laughs> then I'm gonna take my um, Fresh Freesia and I'm gonna go over this and that is going to tie these two colors together now. It's gonna tie his hat um, and that element there to the uh, to the party hat and the, the card and so forth. So, all right, I know we haven't put any Fresh Freesia on our card yet other than the ink, but we're gonna add some more, so. Okay, so then I just use the light misty moonlight and I would go ahead and cut those out and through the magic of television, drink, I have these guys ready to go. Okay, so puffins are going to go here on the front of our card. Um, I don't know about you though, they get a little bit lost because there is so much busy going on with this tie dye. So what we wanna do is add an extra layer to this. And I was kind of flipping through um, the back of the Stampin' Up um, catalog and looking for fun, like clever kind of sassy dye shapes. And I came across, <gasps> the Hippo and Friends dies. And so they go with a different stamp set, um, Hippo Happiness, here is that one, um, which is Darling on its own. If you like the, the Puffins, probably you already have Hippo Happiness or you should add it to your list. But the die set for these is fabulous. It has these sassy shapes. Um, these guys here and this one, which I thought was a perfect size. So it's a fun shape, it's stitched, um, stitched inside and out, which means you can use it for 
windows, so the outer part for a hole in the middle, um, or inside for um, doing shapes. So I'm gonna grab this one here, and I wanted to add to this the new, so new product alert, ombre um, specialty paper. So it is glimmery, um, but the glimmer stays on it. It doesn't come off on your hands. Um, and the colors are, I think this is not a Night of Navy, Mango Melody, uh, Poppy Parade, and Gorgeous Grape. So if you're wondering how I came up with starting with um, grape for our card this morning, uh, actually this was the part that inspired me. And I have a die cut piece that I've done already. Um, so just pull this out of here. Sometimes um, with these plastic um, backed papers, you might have to run your die back and forth. This one went through just one time, but I did cut it from the back side. Sometimes I find that when I have um, the thicker papers, if I cut from the back instead of on the glitter side, I just get a really nice firm um, cut element. Okay, and let's see, we're gonna turn our ombre, we're gonna turn it up this way. All right, so now check out our, um, check out our project here and we have our, our ooh, he looks like he's falling. I guess you could give him a crutch or something and have him be like a broken leg puffin. But um, so now we have our dancing puffin and our party puffin and they have like a home on the card. So they're much um, more like firmly based. You can actually see them. But I wanted to tie this in with our um, fresh freesia again. So we have this fabulous um, stamp here with the candles on it. And so I took a circle um, here, die cut circle, and stamped some fresh freesia um, candles on it. And ta-da, there we have this. So now I'm gonna add this layer in here and watch what this does to the background. It just really pulls out that fresh freesia from the background, see how that goes? So when you use um, a color on here, and it also accentuates our party hat, when you use a color um, in your projects, you often want to repeat it so that you have um, some extra sort of strength to it. It's not like a random drop in. It's like a, yay, I'm here for the party and I'm gonna stay. <laughs> um, all right, so I've got this guy on here and then I'm gonna go ahead and attach him and I'm gonna use my strong um, Seal Plus adhesive. And remember to just use it on the half of your element that is going to stick to the card. You wouldn't want to put it um, out, uh, you wouldn't want to put the adhesive out here and seal your card shut, okay? All right, and then we have our party puffins and maybe I'll go ahead and stick them on. So let's see, we'll give him a dimensional here. And this guy, I want to make sure his wing doesn't pop out um, past the edge of the card. I think we're good there. Okay, and I wanna make sure he looks like he's dancing rather than like falling. <laughs> Good strategy, let's see. And then this guy, I'm gonna put up a little bit higher. So he's gonna fit up here, okay. And then we need a greeting on here. So I'm gonna grab this Make-A-Wish stamp, which is a great one um, from Party Puffins. And I'm gonna bring Gorgeous Grape back in and grab a strip of um, basic white and stamp this. Oh, pretty good, right across there. And these are the um, white strips that get left over when you um, cut all the pieces to make your uh, tie-dye. And when I have to slide something in, I often like to use um, my multi-purpose liquid glue because it gives me um, a little bit more control. I can still slide things around a little bit before they're committed, so. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna slide that across there and have our Make-A-Wish. Now, other fun things that are included in this die set um, are little shapes, little bows. Um, I could have given our Puffin a bow, actually, or added a balloon. Um, but one of the other things that's in here are these three little flowers. So as I was thinking of tie-dye, what else is tie-dye? Like, clearly, flower power, right? So these three little flowers, I'll put them on here so... I don't lose them like that. <laughs> um, these three little flowers um, I die cut from the end of our um, ombre paper. So they are a great match for us. And where they go through the magic of television, they're here. And I'm gonna pop um, these on with mini dimensionals. So we have a little bit more um, dimension to them and we'll decorate our card a little further. 
and we're still gonna have to stamp the inside of our card here so we'll get there um, now one of the fun things that you can do with these is you can add them to the panel that's gonna show inside your card so instead of putting them all on this side I'm gonna put some over here uh, like that and I wanted to make sure I didn't put those in a straight line across so that one's a little bit up and then this one here I'm gonna put down Oh yeah there we go kind of under our wing here okay all right and then those are cute as they are but they're cuter with jewels <laughs> so all the supplies for this are linked in the um, description here there's a video uh, description whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook um, and the oops video description I'm gonna have to get that one with the um, take your pick tool the video description has that supply link in it so um, these are coarse color matched to the in colors, which means for our fresh freesia, it's absolutely perfect. All right, and I find it so much easier to flip things over by picking them up with the um, take your pick tool. All right, so there we have the front of our card, but we still need to stamp some on the inside, um, which is why I have my gorgeous grape. And now one of the things, um, that is kind of frustrating sometimes is when you get a card all done so i haven't attached this so i could i could still ditch this piece in come back but you know when you put the um uh put the greeting in something and then it's crooked and then you're like ah what a pain so um what i did was went ahead and layer these two greetings together on a single block so we have happy birthday from all of us that way, um, I know that they're going to be straight, so I won't have one that's straight and one that's crooked or whatever. So you can test stamp. I'm pretty confident, I think it'll be okay. There we go. So now I have happy birthday from all of us, and I'm gonna bring back our fresh freesia so that we can add this color, because remember, it's gonna show inside our card too. And I'm gonna pop a cake here. There we go. All right, so now when I bring our card back inside, I can add um, this to our panel and we have our birthday greetings. So fun, um, tie-dye, super festive kind of card. And it really echoes um, that same theme there inside their card, okay? So um, lots and lots of new products here. And somebody asked me a question. Um, oh, Trisha already got it. Yes, the um, hippo dyes are called Hippo and Friends. And there you go. Um, lots of fun ideas on those. And I am a huge fan of spiral dye. Oh, I promised you another card. So here's another puffin card. Um, they're fe featuring the puffins and three of the new in colors and then um, this Taylor made tags, which I'm a big fan of. Actually, Taylor made tags is part of my feature for the month of um, May along with the pansy petals. So this was um, our pansy project yesterday. So if you missed it, you can go back and um, check that one out. But this is one of the um, projects that you'll get in the mail for Card Kits to Go. And Card Kits to Go information is available at lovenstamps.com. So you'll want to kind of check that out, monthly tutorials. All right, so lots of fun with the spiral dies. Um, woo! Uh, so lots of fun with the spiral dies and a fun fold that really helps to kind of extend the party inside our card. So um, if you are a fun fold fan, you um, go ahead and leave a comment with your favorite fun fold just so we know which ones you really like. And if you um, have any questions about any of the products that I've shown, let me know. Um, otherwise, links are in the video description and the um, in colors are fabulous. I'm really enjoying using them. I promise I will eventually get away from Fresh Freesia and use something else. Polished pink has been really popular, so um, maybe I'll get that for Friday. We'll see how it goes. But thank you guys for spending some time with me this morning, and I look forward to seeing you again on Friday for another Make Your Mornings with Meg project. So happy stamping. Bye, guys.